When cloud computing meets with semantic web, a new design for e-portfolio systems in the social media era. This article was written by Paul Kim, Chen Ki Ng, and Gloria Lim. According to the article, the definition of portfolio is a purposeful collection of student work that is kept throughout time for the purposes of improvement and learning. The definition of e-portfolio systems is one where that portfolio is then shared with others for the purposes of collaboration. The adoption of e-portfolio systems is quite widespread. In the United States alone, over half of higher education institutions use some form of e-portfolios. There are four basic approaches to implementing e-portfolio systems. The first, proprietary systems, means that it's homegrown by the institution using it. The second, which is free and publicly available, is the open source system. The third, which are licensed paid commercial systems, are easily available, expensive, but have less problems in the long run in terms of maintenance. The last, which is the HTML language editor system, is common, but quite difficult to set up up front. It requires specialized programming. E-portfolio systems have quite a number of limitations. First of all, is scale. Once a portfolio becomes quite large, it becomes unsustainable because data becomes difficult to transport between system to system. Lastly, the learning level for the users is quite high and this becomes a barrier. However, the advantages of ePortfolio systems is undeniable. It creates a collaborative learning space and it fosters peer assessment. This way, teachers and students both have great advantage of planning and managing. The attributes of a successful ePortfolio system, therefore, is one that is easy to use, one that is sustainable, and one that has all sorts of different features that can last long and that do not have difficulty in maintenance. According to the article, the solution to this is the creation of the PRPL Semantic Index System. This Personal Cloud Butler System, or PCB, utilizes a private public data index system. In the diagram on the left, it is showing the traditional method of ePortfolio systems, where all the data is collated in one learning portal. This is where the problem lies. If everything is actually stored in one portal, that portal becomes quite big and clumsy. On the right is the proposed PCB system. In this system, the data is stored in multiple different areas. Each one of those areas are actually independent and floating in the cloud. The PCB merely aggregates or collates the connection to those systems and makes that the portfolio. This is done by using the X attribute. In the article, it explains how this X attribute actually works. However, at this point, I became quite confused. It was a little bit above my head as I'm not a programmer and the vocabulary used is a little bit hard to understand. To me, semantics, ontology, syntax, this is all just jargon. So, the reflection in my paper is actually going to be talking about what did I extract from this article. There were three things that I found interesting. All are related to my personal past projects. The first, I was very fascinated at the new concept of ePortfolios where everything is stored in the cloud. Back in 1999, I had done a project called the Osmosis Project, or TOP for short, where my students collated all their portfolio materials into one portal. It was very hard to manage. I wish we had a personal cloud system such as the PRPL system. 
This way, my students would have been able to store the materials up in the cloud, access it anywhere, anytime, and not worry about maxing out their storage. The second item that I found very interesting in the article is the fact that the PRPL system allowed for visual searching. Again, this reminds me of something that I had encountered in the past. I used to be the manager for the Center for Industry Research and Archives in an international university. This university stored student works, which were in the form of visual artifacts. These visual artifacts were art materials, design output, that could not be indexed in a normal library system. If only we had the PRPL system back then, we would have been able to store and retrieve student works easily. The third item that I found extremely interesting is the fact that the PRPL system assumes that everybody owns a cell phone. The PRPL system proposed that the unique identifier that would be the metadata identifying the user of that portfolio by that user's cell phone number. This was very interesting to me as my own thesis, the Ask for Help model, was based on the concept of using mobile learning as a way for individualized learning storage. The application of this PRPL system in education is quite wide. The article talks about how critical analysis for long-term student learning is possible. It also looked at the effects of e-portfolios in the academic and professional world. It talked about how teacher intervention and academic programs can be accountable. It also talks about how it can win over the resistance to use by users who find learning new things quite challenging. This constructive and productive sustainable e-portfolio is what made me extremely interested in reading this article. I found this article extremely important for my own team project, the step-by-step -step team. We are looking at solving technophobia by stimulating technophilia. I think that this article holds the key to our project. In summary, I've learned a lot from this article, and I hope to have this article help me in my own team proposal. Thank you for listening. My name is Rose Hussein. And if you're interested in learning more about this article, please click on the links that are available on the web.